I want to go to Iowa City, Iowa, and I want to talk about the Iowa Hawkeyes and the fact that they're running it back with their offensive coordinator, Brian Ferentz, who happens to be the son of the head coach who's been there for 20-some-odd years, Kirk Ferentz, and they're running it back, and we found out details of his contract late last week, and it's basically um, just to keep his job. I don't know if this is to, to even hit employment or bonuses or anything like that, but he has to finish. He has to average at least 25 points a game next year, which if you look this year, that would have been good for 85th in the country tied with Arkansas State. And it immediately came to mind when Kirk and Brian Ferentz play bad teams to start the year, they're absolutely going to empty the clip and trying to score 60 a game, which is an interesting element because they're, they're going to try to run it up on, on bad teams to, to, to hit these numbers. Jack, I'm about to do an Iowa rant. So before I do one, would you like to say anything about it? No, I, it, it's a very interesting contract because you look at it and you think, oh, I see what you're trying to do, but could this be counterintuitive and it could change how they're going about things, but maybe it's forcing them to do like to change. And that's what the Ferentz family hasn't done in a little bit. I'm looking at the schedule now, South Dakota state to start the year. And then they're at a conference is also Nevada. And then Iowa state. So those yeah. are, is it, I feel like it's possible they doesn't get to 25, but yeah, I don't have direct takes on it, but it is going to be something that's interesting to track next year. All right. Well, I have a take on it. Oh, go ahead, Katie. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. And I, I can see Kirk Ferentz getting mad at his defensive coordinator at the end of the season. You only have three pick sixes. Four pick sixes would have gotten my son. Anyway, so here's my Iowa take. I think we are in the waning days of the Ferentz regime, not the Brian Ferentz regime, the Kirk Ferentz regime at Iowa. They are trapped in a loveless marriage. They are. And this pathetic little contract for Brian Ferentz is like when couples who don't love each other anymore sit down in the room and say, you know what, we're going to keep going, we're going to keep trying for the kids. And no one in a year, they're just going to look at each other and they're going to detest each other even more. Brian Ferentz isn't the answer at offensive coordinator. And Kirk Ferentz in 2023 isn't the answer as head coach. I know I use this example a lot. And Iowa fans, I know we have a history. I'm just spitting facts at you. I'm not I'm not coming from a place of bias. I'm just coming from a place of a college football fan that watches college football. You can't run the offense Iowa runs in 2023 and expect to be successful in football. You just can't do it. That's a fact. That is a fact. You've seen other defensive coaches like Kirby Smart, Nick Saban, change everything they do offensively because it fits with the times. Kirk Ferentz hasn't done it. He still runs the two tight end model, the fullback, all that Old stuff. Look at Wisconsin right now. They're moving into 2023, and Iowa still won't do it. It's just wild. If you look down at Fort Worth, Texas, they got in a loveless marriage with um, with Gary Patterson. TCU got in a loveless marriage with Gary Patterson, and they broke ties. And a year later, they played for a national title. That is a very extreme example. But Kirk Ferentz doesn't play winning offensive football in 2023. His son doesn't play winning offensive football in 2023. Any contract you write up trying to get numbers for them to hit and any coat of paint you put on it, like bringing in a quarterback from Michigan, it's just delaying the inevitable. It is time for Iowa to get serious about football in the modern days and move on past Kirk Ferentz. I'm sorry. I know he's been great there. He's been phenomenal there. They have so many NFL players. They've had so many great seasons. But look around. Look at what's happening. Look at how many how, how other offenses are faring. Look at Michigan, who used to be a boring offense, what they do now. Look at what Wisconsin's about to try to do. Look at what Georgia does offensively. If you want to be a good team, you can't just rely on one elite side of the ball and a couple of good tight ends. That doesn't work anymore. And the longer you look in the mirror and say, you know what, Kirk Ferentz is our guy, you just fall further and further behind. And Iowa is such a good program with a good resources and, and good everything. If they if they moved into the modern age, I think they would be a lot better for it. That's what I think anyway, Jack. No, I agree. I guess I want to give them one more year with Cade. How many but, one more years do you get? 
Uh, look at it. Look at behind. Can you see behind Katie right now or no? Look oh, who it is. All right, look, look at that. Fucking Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell it's the oh, Alabama man. A. You, te- you can tell it's the Alabama A because it has the mullet. Uh anyways. Um <laughs> that was that just threw me off. But <laughs> no, with Iowa, you're right. And I think what you said about TCU is such a great point. They could have stayed with Gary Patterson and be like, hey, he's done so much for us. Um, you know, he waves to the kids the whole nine. Yeah. yeah. Who cares about a five and seven season? The fans still come. But at a certain point, and this is what I was even thinking when we're talking about Alabama, like I'm not saying this by any means, but how many more seasons have to go by before we're like, damn, the game's passing them by? Like, because the game keeps going. You know what I mean? Yeah, the game doesn't wait. The game never waits. The game does not wait. Like, even think about it. It's like, we didn't even think of, like, Tennessee popped out of nowhere. LSU went and spent $120 million on Brian Kelly. In the Big Ten right now, look at all these teams that are trying to change things. What if Nebraska gets good with the Matt Rule? And then Iowa State. Yeah, Duke. Yeah, exactly. These teams keep coming. And if you don't lash out to try to get a guy um, that – can change your program and the guy that was working in 2011 isn't working anymore. The game can pass you by. And then you're like, wait, you remember when I was good? I'm not saying that's going to happen, but last year, there's not that many more years for them to have any more fuck ups.